Hey fellow traders, today's video I want to basically take you all the way back to the beginning and basically just go over how to trade. And this video I'm going to pretty much just cover a lot of different things but everything is going to be kept super simple. We're going to start in the very beginning and go through a lot of uh just basic points kind of like you would learn how to drive for example so uh basically in order to drive you don't really need to know how the car works in order to get from a to b and that's kind of the idea of this video it's gonna start out by covering some things that you're gonna need and then i'll detail some other things uh that are be laid out uh for what we plan to do uh, it's been a minute since I've had a video going. I've been doing a lot of research and development, uh, so to speak, and I've kind of refined some things down to make it very beginner friendly. So first things first, we're going to start out with the basics of first what you need. You're just going to need time to watch the video in its full entirety because we're going to cover uh, from start to finish to take you basically from being a person who just found out about forex to a knowledgeable trader in a sense to where you know and how to get into the market and operate and function and control your account uh, and manage your risk because that's always going to be the primary thing so uh, the second thing you're going to need is a little bit of time to learn and to actually trade uh, one video is not going to really make or break your entire trading career, but uh, it will certainly help you out in the long term. A lot of uh, trading comes from experience, so you're going to need time to basically practice those things, and we're going to talk about that a little bit in this video. The next thing you're going to need is a broker. Of course, you need a way to get into and out of the market to execute your orders and trades and to make your money or lose your account. Uh, you're going to need a minimum deposit for the broker. So this will get into the actual costs of what we're doing and you're going to need TradingView. So what we're looking at basically for that is for your broker. You're going to want to try to basically find one that's regulated or uh, you could take a chance and get an unregulated broker for some different advantages. For example, if you're in the USA, uh, I have actually a couple of different accounts. One is unregulated uh, and that's just for the sake of taking advantage of the leverage. Uh, but most brokers will need between 100 and about 250. Some will even need about 500 in order to open an account uh, some brokers can be open for as little as fifty dollars and then the only other thing that you're going to need that i would recommend just getting the lowest level because this will allow you to do the replay on the faster time frame bars uh, but just get the first level subscription of trading view and i'll actually leave a link that for that in the description but it's 15 bucks a month it allow you to do a lot of additional things and i know in some of my other videos i've actually used a professional back testing software i'll show you how to back test for just this 15 dollars and give you another tool to help along the way as well so uh, a lot of different little things uh will be included at the end of the video there's going to be some extras uh included and Let's go ahead and go over the talking points of the video. So first we're going to talk about the broker, what you need to know when you're looking for a broker, how to choose a broker, what to look out for as far as costs uh, and expenses and so on. Uh, then we're going to talk about trading times of the day, when are the best times to actually trade. There are good times and bad times during the day, or it depends on how you look at it and how you play your strategy. Uh, but there are still specific times that the market is going to typically move more than others and work more than others. Then we're going to talk about order types. Uh, there's a few different order types. Uh, of course, you're probably familiar with just buy and sell, but there are a couple of extra more advanced order types. And I'm going to show how to use one of those 
uh, predominantly in this uh, throughout the video once we get into talking about actually doing the operation of placing trades. Uh, and then we're going to kind of go over market structure before we really get into anything else because this is going to be key to learning and understanding why your trades are working more frequently or are not working more frequently. So like if the, you know, if the market just happens to be selling off and you're constantly buying because you're not understanding the market structure, uh, that could be one key indication of why you, your strategy was not working or why you had a consistent losing streak. Uh, sometimes you kind of have to back out and look at that market structure and that's going to give you 50% of the battle of trying to figure out which way to go with that trade. So after we get through with that, we're going to talk about risk because that market structure uh, paired with the next part of strategy is going to determine how we use our risk. It's also going to determine the reward part and that strategy is going to uh, give us a little bit different information than what most understand it to be. The strategy itself is not the one thing and the only thing that determines your trade, and we'll get kind of into that. And then, last but not least, we'll go over a few extra things along the way. Uh, and just make sure that once you go from... Uh, by the time you reach the end of this video, you should be confident enough to open a demo account or worst case uh, put in a uh, hundred dollars or so into a small account uh, one thing I definitely want to make sure that is known uh, it's a real common myth so I'll go ahead and tell you about this little pitfall before we even get into anything uh, there's a big myth that uh, the Basically, the amount of money in capital in your account is going to have a relevant effect on your actual trading skill, and that is unfortunately not the case. You may hear a lot of people say, go for a challenge, go for a big account, put a large account up, uh, and all that's going to do is cause you to lose money much quicker uh, unless you actually have had some practice, have a strategy, have sound risk management and uh, basically just know what you're doing. I mean, you don't want to go hop in an airplane and start trying to fly without first learning how to be a pilot. So uh, now let's go ahead and get into talking about the broker part. So when you get uh, involved with looking for a broker, you're going to come across a lot of different, inf uh, a lot of different things. They're going to throw a lot of different information at you to try to get you to hurry up and sign up. But there are a few different important things that you want to make note of. Uh, you're, one of the biggest uh, terms that you're going to notice is spread. Spread is basically the difference between uh, each side of the market. So if... Uh, you know, there aren't very many people buying or selling, or if you're using an account that's a spread only, uh, you're going to basically have a large difference in the price. And I can actually go ahead and pull up. Let me get TradingView pulled up real quick. And um, we can kind of show that a little bit better. Uh, the market's actually uh, on its way right now. So... Let's see if we can get some good information. If not, I'll pull up a pair to try to demonstrate that. Uh, but usually once you open up TradingView, uh, that's going to be one of your primary tools that you use. It has a lot of different indicators, drawings, uh, and different things. I've also got a calculator included that you just click and add right to the chart. tells you what kind of a trade size to use, uh, plans your risk, and all that right here on TradingView uh, and updates every second. So it's pretty automatic. I've had it for a while. I've got to update the code, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, let me see here. I've got it on day range. Let me hop down to a smaller time frame and notice here how we have the red line and the blue line. This is called your spread, and that is a difference in points. Uh, and one, of, one easy thing to remember is the higher this number, the more it's going to cost you to trade. So, for example, uh, if you're using OANDA, they're a reputable and regu regulated broker. Uh, also, Forex.com, but uh, some 
brokers will not offer a zero spread account, which is going to be the one that you want to try to go for, if at all possible. <clears throat> because the spread is basically more distance the price has to travel in order to reach your target. It's also going to make it difficult to plan for uh, limit orders, uh, which is the more advanced order type that we're going to get into talking about. Uh, so you want to try to make sure they offer the lowest spread possible. Uh, ideally, you want a zero point spread on the Euro USD. Some other pairs may not give you that, and then other brokers may give you uh, different low spreads on other groups or pairs uh, that could be based on that broker's location and currency, uh, trading currency of what they use for their account. So there's going to be a lot of different things to uh, factor in and look at, but spread is going to be uh, number one on the list for that. So you definitely want to make sure you get that as close to zero or as low as possible. Uh, then you want to look at commission costs. Uh, this is basically uh, another trading cost that you'll have to be aware of. Uh, basically, the you want the lowest commission cost. Uh, Oanda is, I would consider, fairly high, especially when you consider that with the spread. Uh, but between four to eight dollars is around the industry average for commission and usually when you have a commission account your spread is going to be much lower or much smaller if you have a spread only account you're still paying that commission it's just factored into the spread and that's why you have a wide area between your buy and sell price which will give you much further to go in order to become profitable in your position so uh, just keep that in mind that you want to look for that. And then I know we kind of touched base on regulation. Uh, you definitely want to have a regulated broker if you have uh, no real option or if you do choose to go with an unregulated broker for the different advantages it may offer. Just keep in mind you don't you probably don't want to put very much money in there. You more or less just want to put a little bit of money in there that you're okay with losing. Because with unre unregulated brokers, it can oftentimes happen where you experience uh, issues with getting your money back, things like that. Uh, there's also ex uh, issues where they just kind of randomly shut down and just, just too many things to list. It'll be beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but to keep things moving along, let's go ahead and talk about the different order types. And let me go ahead and hook this up real quick so I can get the trading panel up. So basically, uh, for our order types, we have what's considered a market order, which is probably what most people are familiar with, just getting into trading uh, and just getting started. Maybe they've taken a demo account or maybe even a trade or two on their own. And basically, that's a market type order they've probably used because that's the easiest. You're just basically hitting the button and you're immediately in the market. You immediately have a trade on, you're going. So there it is. Uh, trade is on the way and that spread. And notice this is why uh, you want to have that as small as possible because that trade is already starting out. Uh, in the negative um, but uh, you've probably uh, experienced just buying and then not having price go your way lose a lot of money or maybe going a little bit and getting a little bit of money but now uh, if you haven't already become familiar with it you're gonna wanna definitely make sure that an order known as a stop loss is in every trade that you take, no matter how far or close it is, you want to have that stop loss. Basically what this does is it's going to say, okay, the, the trade is not going my way. Or maybe it's moved in your favor a little bit and come back and you've moved this up to catch up with it. And you say, okay, if price, uh, uh, right now we're buying. So if price should go any lower than this, then if price were to come back and go down... By the time it hits this order, you just want to be out of the trade, out of the market, uh, completely done with it. So uh, in this case, what TradingView is showing, that's $2.78. So that's what we're going to look at in regards to risk percentage. 
So uh, oftentimes this is expressed as a percent of the overall account. So if you have a thousand dollars in your account and you are risking one percent, then that would end up being ten dollars of your account, and that's how much you want to try to risk on every single trade. One little insider tip about this is every trade that you place, you want to try to size it correctly and try to get as close as possible to risking that $10 no matter what this distance is between here in order to try to maximize uh, the, the actual success of outcome and the quali uh, quality of the outcome that we're getting when we actually win. Uh, losing is part of the game, so that's why we want to pay attention to the stop-loss part, because if we are wrong, we do not want to lose any more than $10. We don't want to just let this thing keep going and never come back, because then we're going to lose a lot more, probably even potentially the account. So this stop-loss is going to be your best friend in all instances. So, uh, looks like price is starting to move in our favor a little bit. Uh, it does take price time, uh, a little bit of time to get going, get moving, even though this is a five minute chart, you can see it's not really soaring. Uh, we are in the London session right now. Uh, so we'll get into that next. First, let's cover the, finish up the different order types. The second, uh, part of this trade, if you haven't already used it before, is a take profit. And you're going to want to set that at a reasonable place where you think uh, where you think price should at least reach up to. You don't want to set it way, way far away because then what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up having price come up. And then it might get there, come down a little bit, and then there you go. It would reach that target, maybe go a little bit higher. And then come back and hit the stop loss while your targets way up here it never got reached but if you would put it at uh, most commonly the most recent high that is in line with price is usually going to be the most common way to place a target and that would be considered uh, reasonable and you have a higher chance of actually reaching that so uh, that's how you would basically use a take profit uh, is what that is referred to. And that would basically close out your trade and secure the gains into your account. So the next part about uh, orders is the uh, limit order. And this is going to, uh, this is sometimes referred to as limit or a stop. And they do different things uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover the limit first and basically when you're placing a limit order you want to have that price underneath so for example if you were uh, looking to place a buy limit order you would be looking to buy at the best price possible so at a lower price so when price came down you would uh, look to try to buy the price right around in this area here. Uh, and then you would place a stop loss and a profit target on that trade and hope to buy and catch that profit target that way. So that is a limit order. A sell, a sell limit order would be the same thing. You would think, okay, if price is coming down to this way and let's say for example price reached this area here and you were looking thinking that price is going to reach this area here you want to sell from here so the sell limit would be the same thing so when price got here you would then sell from above price for price to come back down and you would put your stop above usually above a recent uh, swing or so on uh, we'll talk about that once we get into market structure and then you're going to hope and bet that well, not really hope, but bet that price is going down from this point. So those are the limit orders. Next, we're going to talk about the stop orders. And these are basically the same thing. They're just the opposite. So uh, in this case, a buy stop example would be 
Okay, price is moving up, but you're not really too sure if it's going to keep continuing or not, or you may have a strategy in place that says you place uh, your, lim your limit order above price. So what you would then be doing is placing a buy stop order. So uh, in the case of price going higher, you would place the order above price. And if price continues, it would now buy... And that is I was actually referred to as a buy stop order or a stop entry order. Uh, and that would be in hopes that price is just going to keep going and not slow down. You would still, of course, want to place your stop loss in a reasonable area, top take profit in a reasonable area. And basically you're looking to catch price like a fisherman would catch a fish in a net. And you're just going to basically catch it and let it take you up. The same would go in place for the sell stops. So you would just basically put your order down here. If you thought price was going to come down lower and keep going, then you would basically catch price and just let it take you down. Of course, take your take profits and your stops. Uh, and those are essentially the uh, basics of stop orders and we'll get into strategy and why you would might want to use one or the other uh, here in just a little bit so now that we've basically covered orders we want to talk about risk and reward ratio so I'm gonna show a little bit of what I've come across that kind of really helped me understand this concept and really helped me realize how this really all works in the bigger picture of things so when you go and place a trade you've probably heard the term or come across the term already known as R ratio and basically R ratio is going to be the amount you risk versus how much you're actually going to win or gain back if you get it right and risk if you lose this is going to be how much is coming out of the account and that's going to be this red zone here if you were looking to go long or it's going to be the red zone here if you were looking to go short that is where the risk is actually factored for and that is always given as a unit of one. That is always one. So uh, the way this works is when you get ready to actually determine where you come out of the trade, that is going to be the reward and the reward ratio. Uh, this number here on the very bottom of the tool, if you were in trading view, that's going to be compact stats mode. Uh, I like it that way. It's a little bit cleaner, uh, but uh, when you first open it up, it's probably going to have uh, the normal stats. And here you can see the risk-reward ratio. And basically what this risk-reward ratio means is that for however much amount of money that you're risking, the risk, the unit of one, you will gain 2.28 units in return of gain. So basically there's one, two, and the, uh, and the last quarter of the gain. So the way this is uh, outlined to work in the long term of things, because you want to always keep in mind that trading is a long term game, uh, you are going to have losses. Along the way, losses are just a part of the game. They are happening to everybody, everywhere, in every market, every instrument. They happen. Uh, you just have to accept it. There will never be a 100% win rate strategy ever in existence. If there was, the market would not work. And that's just the way it is, unfortunately. So the next part is how this is going to relate to controlling the losses. Because it sounds rather simple. You know, you want to definitely make more than you lose. And that sounds simple on the surface, but it doesn't really uh, work in the long term of things. 
because a lot of people and a lot of traders will start to actually look at the target part. They will actually start to look at it in, in, in a dollar amount of how much they want to win instead of looking at it from the risk side of things first. And they'll try different things such as trying to find a pair that moves quicker. Uh, they will try to find pairs that stay and make very deep or strong or long moves uh, and try to do that quickly. They're always trying to catch the quick. But the quick is not the way to make money. It is not how you grow an account quickly. It is not how you trade. It's how you gamble and speculate. You do not worry at all about a target. And the reason being is you will never make more than you lose focusing on this target because what's going to end up happening is you will wind up, uh, that's a little small. Oh, I know why. Ha. Huh. Okay. Um, uh, because you'll wind up getting in a bad habit of cutting out short price. You'll get in a good trade. You might get a good entry and price will pull back a little bit. So you'll just cut it out here. And in reality, you should have just left it because price was still working and going and hit the target. So uh, do not focus on this part at all when you're trading. And we're going to kind of get into that with the strategy part and why. But just always think of it in terms of one. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about how does this work out in the long run to help you make more than you lose. Instead of trying to look at everything and trying to make this dollar amount, that dollar amount, so on and so forth, your risk is always proportionate to the reward. They are not separate things. You can't risk $3 and get $300 in a short amount of time because that is not proportionate. So uh, we're always going to think about risk as one. Especially when we're practicing, looking back, even when we go to do this strategy, risk is one. It's always one, and we're going to try to make this the same for every trade. It doesn't matter how big this uh, stop area is. You know, on one trade, this it might be eight. On another trade, it might be 12. And then on another trade, it might be five. But every single one of these will be one R. And we want to make that R 1% of our account's capital. Or in the case of an example, we'll just say a set dollar amount and not even try to run that calculation. We'll just figure up 1% of our account to start with. And then for the next handful of trades, we're just going to risk that same amount. And then what we're going to do, uh, not only will that keep things a little bit simpler because we're already going to be working out our position sizing, so on and so forth. Uh, we're just going to think about it as one and make it a set amount. So uh, let's say, for example, we're going to trade with a $500 account, 1% risk. We're going to trade and make every R $5. So... Uh, now, the way you want to work this out when you're trading in your strategy is you're going to try to get a risk-reward ratio greater than 2R. I usually would recommend at least a 1 to 3, and I'm oftentimes trading for a 4 or 5, but you at least want to try to get a 1 to 2. Uh more often than not, you will get it right about 40 to 50% of the time in the market. And when you're looking at statistics and math and numbers, a lot of people will look at what is the common ground number of how often do people hit and actually get a win out of this. And a lot of people will look at risk reward ratios in kind of the wrong light. Uh, it's not so much about how much, how often do everybody does everybody commonly hit. It's more about in four trades, for example, of one to three. In four trades, 
you have to actually get it right 25% of the time or one out of every four has to win in order to break even minus your commission fees and spreads and if you were swing trading uh, your swaps but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna try to show you some ways to trade without involving swaps so uh, but we'll cover that uh, as well when we get into it uh, once we get into working on a chart but on a one to three you have to get one out of four has to win that doesn't mean one out of every four will win it does not mean that if you don't win uh, for example like you lose five trades in a row that doesn't mean that strategy is no good that just means you're uh, more than likely going to hit uh, again here soon and break the lose streak and you uh, will oftentimes run into winning streaks as well so the idea is to balance out over a few hundred or thousand trades uh, in order to get some accurate numbers for how well a strategy is doing so just because you have haven't won you know six or seven trades in a row that doesn't mean you're missing this number here basically in this case here you only need to win 250 out of a thousand trades you have to lose 750 trades using the one to three risk reward ratio in order to fail out of the account in a thousand trades so uh, it is very likely that you're going to be able to hit 250 and lose less you'll hit more than 250 and you'll hit less than 750 losses more than likely you'll wind up with something along the lines of 330 wins you know and 670 losses so that's going to result in a much better than 25% win rate so you're good to go uh, and the way this is going to work out in the long run so uh, for example if you lose one and you lose that five dollars and then you lose another you lost five more dollars but if you're using the win one to three and you win this one well now you're going to win fifteen dollars and that's based on this risk reward balance of multiplying your risk and that's why it doesn't matter how much the pair moves it doesn't matter which pair it is as long as that pair is moving that's how you're gonna get the account going if the pair is just kind of sitting still price is flat you're not making money but you're not losing money you need price to be moving in order to get the account equity moving the trade is the connection of the equity to the market so price isn't moving or we don't have a trade on our account is not going to change but in three trades if you lost two and now you won one you now are actually up five dollars to begin with now if you repeat that same process you end up with theoretically two wins and likely four losses but in the end you're going to actually wind up with ten dollars in positive gain and this is how the whole make more than you lose actually works you have to risk the same amount no matter how big or or small these stop sizes are you risk the exact same amount and if it does like I say it doesn't matter if this is seven this is 15 on the next one this is five dollars and this is five dollars so either or this just means also as well if you're going for a one to three you're going to have to have price moving 45 pips or points and in this in the case of this one you only need price to move 21 and this is why it doesn't matter about overall this pair moves way further than that pair or this pair moves so you know none of that is really irrelevant this is what makes the money this is what makes it quickly or slowly and that's also kind of determined a little bit by time frame and time of the market, uh, which we're about to get into here in just a moment. Let me double check my notes to make sure. Uh, so we have covered everything in regards to uh, basically understanding that we're going to need a broker. We're going to need to trade at specific times of the day, which we'll get into in just a moment uh, with the next part of it. We've covered our order types and 
we've also covered our R value, and that doesn't really seem like it tells you much about how to trade just yet. But we've got a couple more sections, and then everything is going to really come together. So give me just a few more minutes uh, to get through a few more things, and then we're going to actually be to the part of placing some orders. So the next part on the list, we're going to get into market structure. So with market structure, this is actually going to tell us which way we're going with our trades. It tells us whether we want to trade or whether we want to be selling or whether we actually want to set this day out. So uh, basically... There we go. Let me get this out of the way. We'll go back to the whiteboard, blackboard, and we will start talking about our market structure. Let me get that one. And so, what is market structure going to tell us, and what exactly do we need to know about it? Yeah. I'll get a little bit better writing. I had to turn off my touch screen. That would make it nice. But market structure. Okay. Uh, basically, market structure is going to tell us where the market may likely be heading next. It's not really a predicting tool, but it is a tool for giving us a bias or an idea of where we think we might be looking to enter for trade. Uh, as far as which direction are we going up? Or are we going down? Or are we just not moving anywhere at all? We're just staying flat. We're kind of going around and not moving. Or in the case of going up, you've probably already come across or may have heard this term before, higher highs and higher lows. This is basically uh, where price is moving up in an uptrend. It will be making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, and that's basically where price moves up. It starts to come back down, but it does not come back down below the last point at which it was low before. So it would probably uh, have come down a little bit and then come up. And then what we will do is if it's continuing to uptrend is this last point that would be considered the higher high, oftentimes labeled a HH. It will break past this price and make a new higher high. And then if the trend is going to continue, another good sign is going to be what's called a higher low. That's a higher low here. That's a higher low here. Uh, assuming price came from uh, below. And if price is going to continue and keep going up, these will all be higher, higher highs, higher lows. And that will make a trend line here. And of course, carry on and continue on. This is an uptrend. A downtrend is going to basically be the same thing. Where you got your lower lows. And lower highs. And every time that lower low gets broken by price, it will make a new lower low. And a good sign the trend is likely to continue to make a uh, continuation down it will be a lower high let me make sure I'm putting the right abbreviations there and this will continue on in that fashion and price would be on a downtrend in that case oftentimes making a trend line to continue on now if price is consolidating or flat or not really going anywhere You'll see it kind of go down a little bit, act like it's going to go, and then it just kind of snaps back up. Maybe it's going up this time, but no, now it's coming back down. And it's just kind of staying around in a range. It's going to end up where it's just not going anywhere. There's no real clear direction. There's no real uh, idea of where price is going. Who knows? But in this case, we expect price to go higher. And in this case, we expect price to go lower. So in the case of price being flat, not going anywhere, nobody really has any idea of where this is going. 
So you probably do not want to open any positions because more than likely what's going to happen is you're going to say it's going higher because you see this here continuing. You're going to buy and then price is going to drop and then it's going to stay low. So you'll cut that out. Then you think it's going to go lower. You're going to end up selling and then it's going to come back and you're going to end up losing that one as well. So those are just unnecessary and we'll give you... Uh, I'll actually go over a little bit of a strategy and show you a way to kind of identify uh, these different situations. Um, and oftentimes, I know a lot of entry traders will get into using indicators. And I kind of have one that I feel comfortable using. And that is going to be the MACD. Uh, it's called the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator, and it's kind of a moving average based indicator. And I would recommend setting this up for at least the 15 minute time frame. And if you're uh, using TradingView, as I'd recommend, you just come up to Indicators and you just type in MACD. And it will come up. There's a few different ones that people have made. I'm trying out a couple of them. Looking at a couple of them. Uh, but just click the star on the moving average convergence divergence. It's a basic indicator that comes with trading view. And when you first load it on the chart. Yours is not going to look like this. Uh, it's going to look a little bit different. But I have changed the settings. Uh, basically uh, yours is going to look like this when you first load it on the chart. Uh, you're going to see some different colors. You're going to see a middle line, and you're going to see a couple of different lines. We're going to change this up, and then I'm going to show you how to read it the way it's set up uh, with a little bit less information, but uh, it actually tends to make a bit more sense. So you're just going to double-click on it, or you can uh, click on the little uh, settings icon here next to the name and pull up the menu to change some things we're not really concerned about changing anything here we're going to leave this exactly as it is uh the only thing we are going to set this to is uh depending on a strategy uh, i'm going to go ahead and set this up for what we're going to be using it for i'm going to lock this to the 15 minute time frame i don't really advise using an indicator below the 15 minute time frame as they tend to lose accuracy quite drastically uh, once they get below 15 minutes or so. Uh, there's just too much going on, too much information uh, to be accurate, to be uh, knowledgeable or accurate or knowledgeable about what's likely to happen in, in the upcoming uh, hours or so of the market. So on the next part, you're going to just want to click style. This is where we're going to make our major changes. We don't need the histogram, uh, which is uh, the different colors that you were seeing up here. Uh, but what we do need is the MACD, the signal, and the zero line. I usually take my values and my labels off. This is just a cosmetic preference. The zero line, we're going to leave that the same. But we are going to change our MACD. We're going to actually put histogram on that. And this will now look more or less the way you have it set up for MT4. And then you can come in, I'll, I like to put thicker lines on the histogram part and then make the signal line a little bit thicker so it's a little bit easier to see. And then uh, there'll be different colors, but you can change those around. <coughs> I prefer blue for the histogram, orange for the line because it makes it very clear and easy to see. Okay. So that is set up. Now, what are we actually looking at when it comes to this indicator? So right now, what would kind of look obvious, let me show ahead, go ahead and show the chart, is you may notice that it kind of indicates when price is making some moves. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these indicators are going to have a slight delay. They're always based on past data. It tells you basically at this point in time, uh, right here on the indicator itself that basically up to this point right here that we're looking at price before it was on an uptrend and the way that this setup actually indicates that it's an uptrend 
is you'll notice the blue area. Let me get a little bit. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me restart this guy right here. Having some issues, a little buggy with it. Vertigo. There we go. And grab a different color. There. Okay. We see that the blue has actually crossed above the orange line, the signal line. And basically what this is telling us, because that signal line moves slower than price itself, it's based on a little bit more data, this is an indication that you're actually in an uptrend. So let me, let's zoom back and kind of look at this a little bit. So we're looking at from what from before notice how these are above the orange line and they kind of stay and come together then they continue up and go above the orange line some more so basically right here this is our big move you'll notice that it's a large area it got really far away from the signal so that will show you that it's a really strong move you don't really want to just jump in and at random and catch a price uh, because that's considered price chasing, but it is a pretty good indication if you were to do that, as long as you catch something fairly reasonable, uh, it will not get you in trouble too bad, but you got to be careful about doing that because it will oftentimes come back, take your position out, and then go. So you won't, we'll talk about that in the next part when we get into a little bit about strategy. But the way we're going to use this indicator uh, for the rest of the video and the way I would kind of recommend using it is anytime you see a gap a little air gap or a little space uh, between the edge and the top part of the indicator and the actual signal line whenever they're highly separated to the top side this is a buy signal or a buy indicate well not really a buy signal but a buy in it the market is long or in a buy state it is in a trending up state whenever you see the top of the histogram staying below the signal line the market is usually moving down so in this case here we have the higher lows higher highs higher, or lower lows and lower highs making our downtrend there we go. Let me get that right. So we're getting our lower highs and our lower lows to make the downtrend. And we have the top of that little histogram that we set up below the signal line. And it's not very far below the signal line because it's moving a little bit slow. So... Uh, that's one indica key indication of this indicator. Notice when it gets really far away from our zero line, our zero line here, and it gets really far, that you, or it's moving away really hard, it tends to make a bit of a bigger move and then kind of continues up a little bit. So when you see price kind of snapping back after it's moved really far away from the zero line, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to reverse, especially when it slows down or comes down very slowly to the zero line. If it's not having really strong moves away from this zero line, that's usually an indication that the market is consolidating, a condition in which we don't want to be trading too much in because we're going to wind up not getting very much at all in regards to actually getting some distance or getting some moves out of our position to make any kind of profit we want the market to be making some moves and significantly on its way so here after a couple of bars it significantly moved away and you can see it kind of pushed continued on and went up so that is one of the best ways I think is to actually look uh, one of the best ways I think of actually using that indicator especially when you go and zoom in to a lower time frame 
uh, keeping this set to the 15 minute when you're looking at a 5 or a 1 minute for example uh, this will give you a overall perspective and keep you from doing what I consider to be zooming in too far so that is one way to use that and I'll just keep it down below for now I'm not really uh, too worried about that in a sense I'll also show you one other thing here in a minute but first we're gonna have to add one more indicator <laughs> and for this one it is called the scalpers toolkit ATR widget and that is by me you'll find that uh, it's it labeled as a scalpers toolkit but this is actually how we're gonna calculate our position so make sure you favor favorite that as well because it's gonna basically run all your numbers for you without having to do a lot of work now when you first uh, add it to the chart it's gonna look like this and you can double click it or just again use the settings up here or hit the gear icon and you're gonna to want to come to the inputs and this this is how it's gonna generally be set up I'm about to get to work on this part here uh, for right now you can use standard ATR or uh, pips everything is in points and this is a forex specific right now for coding uh, may actually end up staying forex specific just because of the coding limits and what this is going to do for you is calculate your uh, risk and reward in regards to what type of size and distance you should place these different uh, limit orders so a very common method to use the ATR uh, to try to set this up and basically the ATR is another indicator uh, that basically just tells you how far price has moved over the last X number of minutes or hours or so on depending on which chart you're in uh, basically just how far is the price moving uh, the higher that number is the better off uh, it is for trading because that means the market is moving and you're able to get into the market and able to actually change your equity uh, but this will be used for calculating the size of the stop loss and then we're gonna calculate our reward ratio and it's basically going to put all the information in this chart when you first start it out it's not going to uh, it's not going to show you any of the numbers you'll have to come down to the next part where it uh, is just beyond your account balance but this will help you calculate the risk percentage and uh, here you just put in the USD I kind of cover it in a couple videos but we'll be using it using it here in just a moment uh, when because I'm going to show you some examples uh, as we're getting into strategy because kind of showing you the strategy and examples are kind of one in the same uh, so we'll just go over this and we'll set that up we can actually do our risk based on a fixed dollar amount or a percentage based amount percentage based you will have to set this up on the account size now in order to get the actual dollar amounts and any deeper calculations you just basically have to agree to this uh, what this is is it just says that this is this is for entertainment purposes you have to understand what you're trading uh, I'm not responsible if it gives you some wrong information please understand what you're trading uh, if you're kind of using this it's meant to be basically just a reference and this will be uh, an automatic or a manual calculation mode if you want to set your own size you can do that here <coughs> excuse me and I'm going to set this up we'll just say thousand dollar account for the sake of example um, let me get this set up how I prefer you can set it up actually a lot of different ways and I'm gonna put this might be a little too small I'll leave it normal so everybody can see it and I'll s stick it in the center of the middle not not that middle sorry uh, right middle there we go and now we have our position calculator to work for us now and there's a lot more information in regards to what's uh, actually happening with the position calculation so right now on this chart uh, price is actually moving about 
2.3 pips or so uh, per five minute segment. And let me take a break just a moment. And I will continue the video. Give me just one moment. Okay, I'm back. Apologies for that. Had to regroup a little bit and start a new recording because the other one cannot be extremely long. Uh, this video is already getting long, uh, but as you can see, it's been a little bit of time and the price has not really moved that much. So uh, this is one thing to one important thing to note that even if it does have strong momentum, uh, unless it's like a news event or something like that, it's probably not going to move as fast as you think it will. Uh, but it does look like the trade is staying in our favor. We've also got the indicator showing the signs of continuation for us right here. So you notice sort of where our blue bars are above the orange line. So that is kind of a basic strategy. Just whenever uh, you're seeing a clean cross and then you start to get separation, it's good to look for a entry to the long side it's very likely that it's going to continue and reach the target. So uh, just a quick little bit on strategy. Uh, to continue back where we left off, I went ahead and put that position in place so we can keep an eye on it of where it's going. And notice now that we've set the calculator up, we're starting to get some information. Uh, it doesn't quite match what we had here. That was just an example for showing the entries. Uh, we're going to get into... Uh, actual strategy here in just a moment uh, we're going to use part of what I just talked about also as well coming up uh, for making a full uh, more complete strategy but you'll notice now that you have something called pip value uh, it'll show you what the stop and the profit target are worth so basically if you were to lose in this situation you're looking at 968 and if you were to win, you would get 29.04, uh, which would be a gain of about 3% on the account. But if you lose, you only lose one. So again, that's that one R. So uh, if we were to win, that would be 3% or 3 R. So if we were to win, that means we can lose two more times before we're back to where we started. So that's how it works in the long run and why you want to try to get greater than one to two or one to three. Oftentimes uh, you may get situations, uh, we'll talk about this in a bit, where you're going to be getting four to seven sometimes. So when you get those, those are really nice. Uh, it kind of depends on the market setup. But uh, before we move a little bit further, we're going to have to cover a couple more terms that just came up, and that is the lot size, the PIP, and uh, let's go ahead and cover those quickly uh, so that we're all the way up to speed on what we have going on. So basically, uh, what we're looking at in regards to PIPs and points this is basically how far uh, price has moved. If we're looking in terms of point first, this is going to be basically the smallest amount of movement that a pair can move in currency uh, when it comes to for, uh, Forex and currency trading and other instruments like futures and uh, options, you're going to have different terms. In Forex, you're going to be using point as the smallest and a pip is 10 of these points now when you're looking at currency pairs you'll notice how they have a five digit decimal for the price uh, some in the case of the jpy you're going to have three decimals uh, but basically the point is going to represent the last the very last number of the price so right now we have one 08538 the 8 is going to be the pip or the point sorry and the pip is going to be this 3 
And pips are always represented as a decimal unit. 1.0 is one pip. So basically this would be 3.8 pips if you were looking in the case of 1085. And I'm not going to write it out because it'll take a minute. <laughs> but in the case of 1085, and if you if you were going from 108500, price is 3.8 pips away from 1.08500. And it is 38 points away from 108.500. And a lot of times when you're working with MT4, uh, and in the case of this calculator, you're going to be working in points. So if you type in 30 points, that is going to be 3 pips. Okay, and now we've got uh, the next term is lot and unit. Uh, these are basically trading sizes. More often than not, you will see terms listed as either 1.00 lot or 100,000 as a size. And they don't really specify in a lot of cases, but in this case, they're referring to units. And units is basically the smallest denomination of currency. So one unit of any pair that you're trading is going to be equal to one US dollar uh, and that's going to be determined by this rate of exchange so in the case of the euro uh, you're basically using 1.08549 euros to buy one US dollar uh, and that would be one unit now if you're looking at the case of lots you're going to be Looking at 100,000 units, that would be considered one standard lot. And it's usually referred to as the full name of a standard lot or one standard lot. And then uh, your smallest unit, if you're trading in lots, is going to be, uh, in the case of MT4, MT5, it's going to be 0 0.01. And basically, that refers to 1,000 lot uh, units this is going to be the smallest number that you can trade in mt4 and in most cases now if you're using a broker specific account or the broker software you will be able to trade in units in which case if you were to trade a hundred units you would basically be trading 0 0.001 lot and, I keep, and I'm a little dyslexic about the exact terms of micro, mini, and nano. Uh, but uh, just in the case, if you were trading in these sizes of units, uh, or if you're practicing in, or trading with TradingView, it uses units. This is how it would convert. So if you have an MT4 account connected to TradingView on one of their brokers, uh, just keep in mind this 0.01 is going to be the size that you're going to have to be working with as the smallest size and they'll have to be in 1000 lot or 1000 units uh, and 1000 unit increments but that would be 10 basically we don't need to worry about that for this part that would basically be 10 and then of course that would be one with the zero 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 bunch of zeros and that's how basically you're sizing as far as if you are trading uh, i know in stocks you're trading shares and options you're trading contracts and futures you're trading contracts but in currency pairs you're exchanging dollar for dollar uh, for that currency or union or uh, area of the world's pair so now that we've got that covered I think we are ready to jump into a little bit of strategy uh, so everything's still going in our favor it's still not moving very quickly but we are getting there and when you're looking at this in terms so now we were talking about pips and lots we now have five pips of price movement since we opened the position here so uh that 
isn't really much, uh, but once we start talking about our sizing here in a moment, we're going to uh, see how that's going to affect the account. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is just let that run, and I'm going to shrink things down, and I'm going to start to talk about a strategy. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom back a little bit. And we're going to do all of our back testing and having our little bits of fun all in trading view. Let me. Uh, it was working earlier. It's not working now. I'll just take it back as far as we can go on the five minute indicators attached to the 15 minute. And we won't need to look at the 15 minute chart uh, because we'll just use the indication of what's going on to read and judge the 15 minute off of our current trading chart. There we go. We finally got back to the end. Uh, we'll be going back to January 24th. Uh, Sunday the 7th, January the 24th. So that's what we'll go back to. I'll hit replay. And we'll start right there at the beginning of the day. All right. So now... We talked about market times, market structure, uh, day of the market. So right now, in the case of Monday, we are still in the pre-market session. The actual market itself will not open until midnight GMT. One thing I kind of recommend is down here at the bottom... You can actually set your time zone. I would recommend either setting it to UTC or UTC London. Uh, this way you're actually on time with the market. So uh, we want to be, mm, let me see. Yeah, so it's going to give us the same. Okay, that's where I'm confused. Okay, um, we're back testing, and it's not going to show what time it is here. It's showing what time it is now. Never mind. Sorry about that. Confusing. Uh, but uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that there are actually four sessions in Forex trading, but only really three of them I would consider to be worthwhile, and two are the ones you really want to be trading. Uh, those sessions are referred to as the Sydney session, the Tokyo session, the London session, and the New York session. And those names correspond to uh, basically times during the day at which these uh, various areas of the world, their stock markets, their bond markets, their money markets, banks, finances, all of these markets will be open, in which case that will give you the best probability of catching some movement with that pair so for example uh, right now I put this line on here that's going to be a brand new day uh, brand new day at midnight GMT is going to be the Tokyo session and seven o'clock uh, coming up and about eight hours of the testing that's going to be the London session and it's usually abbreviated LD, Tokyo is TY or TKY. And then 1300 is the New York session. At 1300, that's going to be your highest, highest volume. The London or the GU session, that's going to be where basically your volume kind of starts to pick up. And let's say in terms of the day so this line here represents these two lines there's one full day you'll have your tokyo session and you'll notice here price didn't really move too much it's often nicknamed the asian range but then once you start getting around to six o'clock notice how things really start to pick up and whip around a little bit and now when we come into 1300 price really shot down and then shot back up and really started moving so that's going to be representative of times of the day during your Tokyo sessions, usually going to be fairly slow. 
Uh, right now, uh, current time-wise, we are in the London session on live market. Uh, that's going to be where your volume starts to pick up. But at uh, 1300 GMT time, all these times are GMT. Uh, that's when your volume is really going to pick up and is usually going to be your best time to trade and find trade setups. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and advance and we're going to go ahead and start talking about uh, a little bit of strategy. Now you'll notice here that I've got a line chart pulled up and this is in reference to strategy wise of what we're looking at in regards to trading so right now we have the idea of the market structure and we kind of use the line to represent that so the line chart is going to show you the close of each time segment right now this is a five minute chart so it's going to show you the close every five minutes and notice here i could probably <coughs> use the paint tool and trading view so it'll track the chart but <coughs> geez excuse me but notice here how we have our lower highs lower lows lower highs lower lows and now we start to break past just a little bit some will call that a break of structure or a change of structure but it didn't last for very long because notice uh, let me get that out of the way. Notice it made a higher high, came down, made a higher high again, came down, but now it failed to break that high and made a higher, uh, lower high. And this is commonly referred to as a head and shoulders pattern, but it's the most common way that you'll see a market uh, usually change from going up into going down. So, uh, that's why I used my drawing tool. Ugh. Okay. Um, let me see if I can... If I can get the thing to stop. Uh, let's get rid of these real quick. So we are in that session. I think I'm going to wait for the London session. Because we notice right now our indicator, it's staying kind of close to the range. Uh, we should be coming into London session. Let me get it paused and get a line on there. Uh, actually, one thing I can cover real quick that will save us some time uh, and will also probably help you out. Uh, this is one more indicator to put on the chart. I already have it saved. I kind of like the one from Lux Algo, but there are a lot of them out there. Just type in sessions. Or you could type in uh, kill zones is another one. Uh, there's a lot, just a lot of different. Basically, uh, you're just going to want to start that and add it to the chart. And basically, it's going to show you the market times. So uh, this way, you don't really have to keep up with what time it is, especially when you're back testing. You're not really focused on what time it is. A lot of times, uh, you're more looking for your strategy. So right now we have the London pre uh, open. Well, London's already an hour in. It starts at 7 GMT. And we're still kind of in a range. So uh, right now what I would do in this situation is just kind of wait. And we're looking for, uh, oftentimes I would refer to, and other people refer to this as supply and demand. We would actually need to flip to candles for that situation. Uh, and when we start to talk about candles, uh, basically it's the same as the line chart with just a little bit more information. You have wicks, uh, which are these lines sticking out. This is basically going to represent the overall length of where price traveled during that time period. So anywhere you see a wick, just know that the top of the wick is going to be the highest the price reached in that time period. The bottom of the wick is going to be the lowest the time, uh, lowest price reached during that amount of time. And oftentimes you will usually see red and green or black and white as candle colors. But you will usually have one color to represent a bullish candle. And the way the bullish candle is represented is actually represented. I'll zoom it in just a little bit here. 
uh, is basically the candle will open here at the bottom. It may have moved down just a little bit and then it pushed up quite a bit and then it come down just a little bit more and this is where the end of that five minute period finished. And then at the start of the next five minute period, this candle opened here, pushed down a little bit, pushed up a little bit, and then came back close to where it started and stopped here. This was the end of that five minute period. And these are considered bullish candles because they are moving to the upside with bullish momentum uh, as the most commonly used term to represent uh, buying in the market or the market rising. And now we'll look at the other side. Uh, bearish market, uh, in the case of a bearish candle or a downward candle or a sell candle, um, you're looking at price opening here. It barely went up just a hair. We can see just a small smidge of a line on top of that candle right there. And then it came all the way down here, took out uh, all of these candles here. Uh, as far as their closing price, it didn't take out the bottom just yet there. But... Uh, it came all the way down here and closed and with nothing else on the bottom where it finished this five minute period was the absolute lowest of that five minute time frame and then when it opened again it came back up and then made what looks uh, was commonly referred to as a doji here because it went up and down but then closed and opened in about the same spot uh, the candle that was just before that I was referring to taking out candles before it this is often referred to as an engulfing candle. That would be a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, usually in the case of the engulfing candle, you're going to see basically a close take out the rest of the lows before it. Usually it will take out several, four to five before it. So we have one, two, three, four, five taken out before it all together in this one motion. So in the case of this candle here, it didn't quite take this one out, but it does kind of clear out all the way below there. So the only thing left to take out is the wick. So what I would be thinking is going to happen uh, if we're looking at this situation is just that price is going to probably move downward. And let me see if I can get rid of this successfully this time. Okay. Now... A very common strategy to use and one that I think is quite easy to use uh, and is kind of clear to understand is a supply and demand style type strategy and what you're oftentimes going to look at is okay so right now our market structure is kind of sideways but if we go ahead and zoom out a little bit further uh, we notice that price was making a steep downtrend and then now it kind of went flat. Usually in the case of these long extended flat periods, it is a sign of the market changing directions. Uh, we've also got our market structure kind of changing a little bit here. Where this high is now breaking that high. And then that lows are, the lows are being held up. We do break down a little bit here, but then you see what... Uh, a strong push down and then a very strong push back up. Uh, this down here is often referred to by traders as a rejection. And that usually means that, okay, price is trying hard to go lower, but everybody down here said, nope, we want to push it back up. So uh, that's referred to as a rejection. And then uh, down here, uh, after you see the strong move, Price kind of retreats a little bit slowly. That's usually a sign that uh, that strong momentum is staying in the market. People are not interested in selling no more, so you could probably look for the upside. So that's how you would probably that's how you would kind of assess the price and look at it overall. You're not really trying to look too deep into it. It's kind of just look at it, see what the market's doing. Uh, look at the market structure because a lot of times the market structure is going to be uh, more commonly what you're going to be using to make your trade. So now when we're going to look at supply and demand, 
Uh, right now, in this case, uh, we see a strong push down. Uh, price did not come back, and we did miss the opening of the London for that setup. But uh, basically, for uh, a sell type supply, you're looking for a strong push down that's kind of steady and long, or even in this case, very quick and sharp and it just continues to make a quick momentum down uh, oftentimes the start of the london session is going to be where your higher low of the day is made and in this case our new day just started here and actually no it started here so uh it looks like that's going to be around the high point of the day i would think price is probably going to go lower We'll take a look at the indicator as things are going by and see if we can actually catch an entry. Uh, there is one other kind of setup that is playing out as well. Uh, this will be another type of supply and demand entry. It's kind of an in-between supply and demand entry. Uh, notice how we have this area here of price kind of clustered together, real tight together. Usually when that's happening, that's often referred to as a flag pattern. And what's going on in that flag pattern, and it looks like a flag basically is why it's referred to that way. Uh, basically, price is just kind of moving back and forth, back and forth, but not going anywhere. It doesn't look like it's really moving. But that is because there are a lot of basically orders being exchanged in this area. Price is trying to go up from everybody buying, but it's time to sell, so price is not going to move because there's an equal balance, and then eventually there's going to be more sellers than buyers, and price will eventually fall. So the way I would use this kind of setup and uh, trade this kind, kind of idea, uh, we do have our indicator not really lining up with the idea yet so I might just wait and I would probably put a limit order here underneath this group and let price go down to see if it's going to come back and try to get a better entry than what's down here and then we're going to control our risk by putting it over this high here because if we're looking at our market structure uh, even in a smaller scale price kind of came up continued to make the higher highs and higher lows and now we're starting to break i don't want to take entry yet because we still have to break this low so if it does break this low now we are confirmed to break out of the uptrend and possibly go back to the downtrend and in which case i'll wait for price to come back here and i will actually take the entry right there and this is considered uh one of the easiest types of entries uh, it's a retest type entry. Uh, keep in mind if you have a spread on your account, you're going to want to stay just a little bit below that uh, in order to catch the price of the spread. You're going to make sure that the stop is above this uh, last swing high right here. So uh, let me get that out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So uh, for our spread on the Euro USD, we're typically looking at a one pip. So we're looking at three and a half pips to the top. We'll go four and a half pips to account for our spread. And then we're going to try to target at least a two to one to three to one. And that's going to actually put us right here around our previous lows and the bottom of that range. So this would be what looks to be a fairly high probability setup and we have a solid risk to reward ratio of greater than one to two let's see how this will play out uh, despite going against the indicator if we kind of look at a larger picture of movement it's kind of staying in the center we just had a big down push and we're getting some strong uh, what we just referred to as rejection off of the top of this level so if we get a break and market structure does show that it's showing a downtrend that would be a very good entry and that would be one good way to look at how to take a trade based on just using market structure alone 
So we'll play this. And it went a little bit beyond the point, but we did not get stopped out. So in the case of looking at our first entry and analysis, it looks like it was a success. So we had one R at the top. And we had 2.93, we'll just say 3R. So now we have plus 3R to our account. And this is how you would go about back testing and keeping track in a quick way because I know oftentimes you're not really looking for uh, all the details you, as you normally would when you're trading. Um, because you're just clicking through candles quickly but basically this is how you can track it while you're doing uh back testing in a quick way and then just come back and add all these up and then add up how many trades you had and see your commission <laughs> so basically what we did there is we found a small area of consolidation that would be an intermediate kind of demand zone or supply zone in the case of selling that would be a supply zone uh, we kind of went a little bit above our price. It's very possible we could have been tapped out there for the spread in case, uh, in that case, we would have lost one R. But uh, with the testing, it didn't catch it and it does show a win. And even though it was only 13 pips, if we risked a total of, let's say we risk $10 in that situation. We won $30. So times 3R means that's still $30. It doesn't matter how big of a move this was. All it matters is that we have three times the reward of our risk. And basically, uh, the better way you can find to basically control your risk and get this size down the better off you are to be able to reach a higher R ratio without needing a very large size trade. So right now it does look like the indicator is starting to confirm more down. So when we come into the New York session, we could be looking for another situation. But I would wait until the start of the session or at least... Uh, wait to see if we're going to break out of this range here now because we've already targeted the bottom. We've won that trade. And we could lose basically three times now before we're right back to where we started. So let's see if it's going to break the range or if it's going to snap back. Um, yeah, so we're starting to break through the range. But keep in mind... wrong button keep in mind that this may be a fake out it's something you'll have to watch out for something you'll learn with experience uh, you don't want to just jump on immediately now we do have the indicator showing a very steep kind of cross down but look it's kind of done that before so this could be a false signal and that's why you don't want to trust the indicator entirely see right now we're still kind of in this range even though we still have our downward market structure until we have a candle that goes below i'm not going to do an entry but let's move it forward and see what we get so it's still kind of struggling so now it did break out so now we're going to use that same idea again. So we're going to look at that little bit of price action right here. And notice how it's tight and close together. Then we have a breakout. Let's move it forward. One more candle. So we could probably, yeah, we could have taken an entry there. I'll see if we can get entry there. So in this case, I would put the stop there. We're going to put the stop above the wicks of that little group right there. 
add a little bit for the spread. So we have six pips in our spread included in our stop loss. Then we're going to target a three to one again. We'll go directly for a three. So this one is 18.9 pips and that's 6.3. Whereas this one was only four and a half and then 13 for the target. We're still going to risk our $10 here. And if we win, we still get another $30. So even though there are different sizes and different lengths of trades, they're going to result in the same outcomes, win or lose. And this is key to the long-term uh, profitability and consistency, is maintaining strict amounts for your risk control. Uh, this is the key part of risk management and also making sure that you have reasonable targets. Uh, I didn't really zoom out. We probably could get a, quite a bit more if we get a good entry. So in this case, I'm going to actually try to target somewhere around the bottom of this area. And that will give us a little bit higher reward ratio. When you do go for bigger trades, it is very likely you could miss it or price could not reach the target and actually come back. But we'll play it forward. We did get the entry and now we got it wrong. So that was actually a fake out. The indicator's coming against us like we kind of feared. And now we're down 1R. So now we have 2R after losing this trade. I'll stick that right there. And we'll move that in. And now what we're having here is a supply and demand type area, type breakout area. And when we're coming from a key area of support or resistance, this is going to be basically support and resistance is anywhere that price has changed direction before. Uh, this would be considered resistance where price is rejected down. This would be considered resistance later on. You can see here where it pushed down. And then this would be considered support. This is where price came into it, tried to go a little bit lower, but then got pushed back up. That's considered support. Basically, it's held up by the buyers. So now we're at 2R still, so we can still get two more wrong. And on our next trade, now we're going to use pretty much that same idea that we just used to try to find that other area of support and notice this little cluster of price here. So we're going to put, uh, it's kind of small to use just those areas, but I know we're going to be covering the wick anyway. So we'll just put a box there and notice how we have three strong candles in a row. And I say strong because you notice the size of these candles. They're not really that big. But if we go and let me see if I can find the right tool here. If we go and look and compare, one candle is as large as that cluster of candles making up the whole range. And that candle is much bigger. So this is showing, you know, in scale. As the candles are getting bigger, this is a very strong buy indication. A lot, it took a lot of buyers to come in and push price this far and this fast. And we should be coming into the New York session here soon as well. Uh, so that could be a good sign of a possible long direction. Uh, we are also getting a break. We did kind of, we're already closing at the high of here. Uh, the wick actually breaks that high, so that does actually indicate a change of direction in regards to market structure itself. There we go. Let me see. Get that back to where it was. And I'll turn it back off. There we go. So when we're using this type of setup on the outside, we're going to do it the same way. And this is part of the key to consistency as well. You want to do everything identical, so 4.9, we'll say about 6. And we're going to go for back to the top of the range. We'll pr target that previous high. By targeting a previous high, even though it's likely to go much higher, by targeting that previous high, 
you kind of help ensure and give yourself a little bit more edge in making sure that you're going to hit it. And you kind of want to stay a little bit below it uh, just in case price do, get, does something where it gets close to it like it's doing here and then rejects back down. So let's see if we can get uh, this entry here. I'll stick that aside. So don't really need that or that. So we're at plus 2R right now. Put that little note up there. Okay. Let's play this forward and see if we can catch a good entry. And see if we catch our trade. Now there are quite a few times where price could more than likely just run away and miss you don't really want to get in a situation where you're chasing it too much and one thing to look out for is when price is in a range like this you definitely do not want to take anything out of the middle more than likely it will you may be right but it will not work out so let's see if we can catch our entry or if it's going to run away or if it's just going to stay in a range i know we have had a slow start to this year so you can get overly excited. So what it does look like price is going to start to run away. Here is another one of those situations uh, where we could use a retest. It's kind of unclear really as being a price cluster. But one thing you'll notice is there's a fairly clear solid line across the closes on the top of these candles. So I'm going to eliminate the box. And we're basically going to use our retest entry to control our risk as our strategy. Now, if we take a look at the overall, we're starting to get our upwards market structure kind of consolidated uh, between this little range here for a minute. But we are making higher highs and we now have a break above the higher level. We're breaking above that candle, and we're also breaking above that candle. So this has actually made a new high for the day. So it's very likely that it's going to continue higher. We've also got our indicator lining up with being on the long side. So it's very likely that we could immediately jump in long here, but that would give us a, a severe disadvantage versus trying to get in over there, because in the case of trying to take an entry right away and if we were to go for a three to one we would need quite a bit more distance in order to get that same 3r reward and we have a long distance to go for the stop that's 11.6 for the stop <coughs> but if we were to do something different where we wait for price to come back here to the top of this level which most cases it normally will we can cut our risk almost in half so if we were to go for that same target of 37 uh, pips and we were to target that the same way now instead of getting three times or thirty dollars back we will actually get sixty dollars back for that same ten dollars of risk so let me clear this out and see if we get this trade. It would be actually very nice to get this trade. Because if we get this, then that means we will be up 9R. And if we're risking 1% of the account, that would be 9% gain. And we did not get that one. But we did get one loss already so we've already had three trades and let's go ahead and play this forward make sure I hit the right button and let's see what we do now so we are getting the movement now I know it's very tempted when you see something like this to probably close out uh, it's also common uh, to hear speak of moving a stop loss up but let's take a look at the example now if you had done that. Let's say you were looking at the market structure and you thought, okay, 
we know that higher low uh, lower highs and lower lows will end up making a change in the market we would have our head and shoulders we had this last low we had a higher low and now all of a sudden we've broken that low but by looking at the overall picture and looking at the higher time frame still being an uptrend we had the breakout we had a demand zone that we cleared out a retest zone because it's very common for traders to actually want to get in on the retest uh, because that will minimize the risk if you jump in way up here and this ends up being wrong you could end up actually losing quite a bit more than you anticipated because a fake out will drive back really hard and you could end up losing more than what you intended to risk in that situation so by waiting for it to get small even if it does rip past and charge you more than what you intended to risk it won't be near as bad as trying to jump in up here so it's all about controlling that risk and see right now we're already uh, 20 pips up off of 6.3 pips of risk so already we have reached a 3R target now I'm still going to let this play out and let it go because had we stopped out here we would only be looking at maybe 1R return or less because we probably would have gotten hit here which is less than 1R on the distance and that would have not been good at all and ultimately taking a lot of trades where you stop out in less than 1R because of a trailing stop uh, oftentimes this will lead to draining the account because you have to get more than you win you have to win more than you lose uh, as you go along trading in the long term if you constantly take in less than what you're risking it only takes a few loss, losses to wipe out an entire week's of work worth of work of trading. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this trade out and then we'll finish up the video uh, and see if we reach our target or if we reach the end of the day. And I would probably go ahead and close that there. So we are looking at 22.4 we didn't quite get the full six but we did actually get uh three and a half on that so we still got more than three on that case so just in the case of looking at trading the opens of the sessions uh, we basically we tried the london and then we had sort of a reversal a couple hours into the London and then the New York so just by trading those two sessions we actually have a total of plus 5.56 uh, 5.49 5.49 5.49 R so now we can lose almost five and a half times in a row before back to where we started. Otherwise, if we were risking 1%, we just made five and a half percent in one day just by using a couple of simple ideas, use the retest, and then we use supply and demand where you have basically a tight group of price. Price comes out, you're going to put your limit order, your limit buy. On there your stop will go below when price comes and retests it will tap you in and if things are in your favor you have market structure going long the indicator can help you out as well uh, and basically if those things are lining up it's very likely that you could hit that trade and just by maintaining that same amount of risk regardless of the distance from here to here uh, you can effectively multiply your risk and gain more than you're losing, which is the key to profitability in the long term. And this is how you will actually be profitable without martingale, without sizing up, without getting crazy big on your sizes. And if you were trading with a $1,000 account plus the 5.5% one one two three one one two three 
times 0 0.05. That would be $50. So $50 made already on that $1,000 account. And that's how you could figure up back testing and all without actually having to run a calculator. So I will uh, go ahead and wrap this up and end the video now. Uh, but that's basically going to be a good introduction, a long, uh, basically extended use of strategy. One last thing I do need to touch on, how we can use this calculator. So let's go ahead and take, for example, this last trade. Uh, you'll take a look. You'll notice the stop size was 6.3 pips. So if we were to use this to set it up for that, you would type in 63 for your uh, fixed stop size. And you would set this option to fixed size. And now that shows your stop loss over here. And we're going for a three to uh, one to three risk reward ratio. And if we were risking a 1% on that account, notice that trade was almost $30, which is what we were working with off the risk reward. So this will also show you uh, one thing we didn't do with the testing in that situation is the lot size. This will show you that if you were using this setup on this particular trade here, you would have been trading a 0.15. So you would basically take 0.15 and times that by your commission, and that'll tell you the total cost of commission for that trade. Uh, but you can make a note of that uh, 0.15. We'll do this real quick. Okay, and then we'll do a couple more. Do the next one. Was 3.9. 6.0 and basically that's going to be 60 points and the risk reward was 3.9 because we targeted a top so basically 3.9 to 1 if we risked 1 percent nine dollars 60 cents but if we won that one we would have actually been uh yeah so i must not have added that correctly so that was almost a four that was three, that was four, that was seven. We lost one, so that's six. Yeah, so we made nine R. Yeah, nine R. Not sure where I missed that, why I missed that. We had nine R on that total day. No, we didn't get that. Can't add that. Take that off. We missed that one. So, yeah, the 5.4 was correct. So, on this one, this is the only one we have left to do. So we had 4.5. So that one would be 4.5. And we were looking for 293 is what we had planned. Sorry, it is 5 a.m. Sorry, I missed that a little bit. But now we were looking at 2901 with $9.90 of risk. And that would be for this position here. And we would have been trading a 0.22. on that so now if we take our calculator this is how we configure our commissions i'm going to finish up the sheet before i release it and i'll release that with another video uh, but we'll take the 0.22 plus 0.15 so that means we traded a total size of 0.37 and i deleted the one but you would basically calculate that off and let's say that we traded that one and it was similar to the 0.6. So we'll just say we traded a 0.16 for that. And that's 0.31. And if we were paying $5 for our commission, then we would have a $1.55 out of the total of what we earn coming out for commission. So overall, if you add up the numbers output by the calculator, you would subtract the dollar fifty-five, and that would be the net profit of that R. So let's see. Yeah. So, uh, but that's just how you could figure up the numbers real quick and a rough estimate. Just use it as one unit. Everything is one unit, and take it from there, uh, and then just make sure that when you're going 
and taking stock of what you've uh, traded for, figuring it up by R ratio and making sure that risk stays the same amount each time. Uh, it's it's fairly easy to actually become profitable and even after you have those losing streaks of eight, nine, ten in a row, all you need is one or two wins to get right back on top. So um, just keep that in mind and keep in mind that the strategy and everything else, Fibonacci's, all these other tools you'll start to learn about, uh, these are all just tools to manage risk. Even the time frame itself is just a tool to manage risk. Uh, as long as you think about it in those terms, uh, things will be a lot simpler uh, as you head down this trading journey. Uh, the best thing to do is practice. Uh, definitely check out uh, TradingView for $15 a month to use the bar replay, and then you get a lot of other features with it as well. And it's actually probably one of the most affordable ways to be able to backtest. Uh, because some of these other softwares can charge $35 to $40 a month. The software I have is upwards of $200 uh, to purchase and get the data subscription, but I feel like it is a little bit better in terms of keeping up with numbers properly. But I've also got a sheet. Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek uh, where basically it'll show you the equity curve, the win loss, and a few other rates. Uh, about your position as you track everything down but I've got to finish everything up before it is released so I'll release this with a little bit later video uh, for now just the simple math will uh, do and then open up a demo account and try forward testing it uh, remember that being patient sometimes is a lot better than trying to rapid fire so uh, just keep that in mind and practice and if you want to try a real account do not put more than $100 in the account because that is more than enough to risk uh, the way I was showing today. And if you cannot grow a small account, you will not be able to grow a large account. You will only lose money faster. So I will wrap it up there and uh, we'll start to make some of the other videos. They'll be a bit shorter. I uh, apologize. This one got a little bit long. Uh, but there's still a lot more details to go in depth with, but you basically now have your driver's license and are able to go and practice on a demo account um, and get some trades in to get some experience and start learning more about market movement and how the market moves. Uh, just remember the Lux Algo sessions. Uh, the risk calculator is called the Scalper's Toolkit and the MACD uh, I'll show you the settings there again. These are all standard. Set the time frame to 10 to 15 minutes and uncheck the histogram and then set this up to be the histogram. And then use a signal line and zero line. And that's all you need for uh, this indicator here. And then if you got a large space between the histogram and the line, you're going short and vice versa the other way around. So uh, just use that as a guideline. If the, the action is looking like this near the zero line, there's still a large separation. It's a good chance to start. Uh, it's a good idea to look for short entries. And if you see that histogram flip sides across that orange line, you may want to consider looking, looking for buys because price may be going up. And I'll wrap it up there again and get this posted. I will see you on the next video. Uh, appreciate you stopping by and I will see you on the next one.